Welcome back to Press Here. My next guest once stared at a naked woman for 24 hours straight and then charged people money to hear his thoughts about the experience. He's created his own space agency, copyrighted his own brain, and tried to turn fruit flies into God. Hygroelectric is a term out of the laboratory for a technology that we don't have yet, but we will soon perhaps. And really, that's not the weirdest stuff. Jonathan Keats once tried to get a law passed in the city of Berkeley declaring that A equaled A, Aristotle's law of identity, which would be the first law that would be impossible to break. We will not be divided. The city of Berkeley said that was too weird even for them. Keats has made paintings based on noise received by radio telescopes and choreographed a ballet for honeybees. His most normal job, if there is such a thing, is as curator of new words for Wired Magazine, a jargon watch editor. The first place to find new terms, usually from high tech, words like ever cookies, the little bits of data websites place on your computer, that are so hard to delete. Jonathan Keats, author and so much more, joins us with some new tech words. Let's start with some words that have been in Wired Magazine, or, or what are, what's your favorite? What's, what's the new hot word that we should be using? Well, I just came across in the newspaper that Stephen Chu is using the word sunshot is a way of talking about what will come next or what has to come next in the way Sun of solar energy. Is that one or two Sunshine. words? It's two words, okay. but I get to cheat in jargon watch. <laughs> by, <laughs> by, uh, <laughs> turn of phrase counts as a word in my book. Okay. okay. What, what word, if any, have you introduced uh, and it actually, I mean, you know, that everybody's using, uh, where, that you saw first? I plead innocent. I don't think that I've ever <laughs> had such an influence, and I really try not to. I more of an observer than an actor in terms of making new language. Jargon Watch really is about trying to find language in the field and to make note of it and then let others take what they like, what take what they want and Well, let me let me rephrase. Wish. What have people taken what they liked and and uh, I mean surely you have have seen a word and then seen it repeated somewhere like in right. mainstream New York media. Times kind of coined digerati. Yeah. Is it take right. Yeah, yeah. Where where have you seen have you seen one and said, "Hey, I saw that a lot earlier in their bias." Um, it's a tough question because I'm not very good at remembering what I've done before. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just keep moving on you're to like the next thing. like all reporters, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. On to the next story. <laughs> but is there is there any one one word that you just thought, really? Uh, why? Can it just go away? There are many words that I feel that about. <laughs> In fact, most words. Um, word of finger is one that I recently cited in Jargon Watch, which is word of mouth, but Done something that you might do electronically. And mm. it's one of these words that is... Word too, of mouth is another one I hear a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th this tendency to pun, and word of mouth actually is 10 times worse, so thank you for yeah, giving me a better that. example. <laughs> exactly. uh, word of mouth is one of the worst words I've heard in a long time, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, because it's just, it's a pun that's so obvious or so clever. Right. And sometimes you can have fun with this. For example, privacy zuckering is one that I recently <laughs> put into <laughs> Jargon Watch. Like and it really does capture mm -hmm. something about Facebook and Zuckering, the sound of it is just right, but of course it isn't going to last more than than a few months. I think that one actually might have legs, given privacy and Facebook, and that's that, mm. that's a story that's not going to go away. So that's true. Hey. It, 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 what, may, it may well. Jonathan, what makes it what makes a good word? I mean, if if I were to invent one, what are the the elements that that go together? To yeah, that make, make it, it sustainable. Word? Well, I think that the best new word in the past twenty years probably is spam. And what made spam so successful as a word was that it was not coined by somebody in the media, for instance, trying to be clever, nor was it coined by a marketer trying to sell you something. It came out of a subculture in which it was used for a real purpose. In fact, it was used quite actively to get people out of the chat rooms on, uh, on sure. Usenet groups. And that word was useful enough that when suddenly the internet came along in a World Wide Web kind of way, and suddenly you had these advertisers sending unwanted email, 
a great term that already had a lot of momentum. It had, a, great it had a great double reference. Yes. It's not only a meet, it's also a, a skit as right. well. And people. <laughs> and in fact, the that. skit is what drove the nerds who made the word mean something that you don't want sure. into uh, spam as we know it. My viewers would, would, would say we were remiss if we didn't go back and, and check on the other stuff, like Ooh. staring at a naked woman for 24 hours and charging money for it. Ah, yes. uh, you're, you're my hero, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, are you charging us for your thoughts today? Um, per minute. What, what, what makes it... Uh, the stunt is the wrong word. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you call it? An, an art? An art effort? Did, didn't uh, Andy Warhol once make a movie that was 24 hours long of somebody sleeping? Or something it, like that, 10 hours, 12 hours? Yes, he also made one of my favorite movies of all time, Empire, which is around eight and a half hours of the Empire State Building doing effectively absolutely nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Wordsmith, tell me if it's not a stunt, what, what, what is it you do? I like the term thought experiment All right. because nobody knows what that means. <laughs> and because I don't really know what I'm up to. And while I do a lot of what I do in the art world, because the art world is inexplicably uh, tolerant of me, I don't really think of what I do as being equivalent to what you see in a museum. I, I'm just not really interested in art as such when it comes to what I do. What I'm interested in is trying to understand how the world works by provoking uh, people into activities that, that, that kind of get them in the act of looking at themselves and thinking about themselves. Do so you I'm consider yourself more of a provocateur than an artist? or I don't want to label mm. you, but... It, oh, uh, let's label it. Okay, label. why not? I'm a reporter. Um, yeah, we're all reporters. Right. Right. Again, I, I like a word that is completely out of use and I don't know what it means, which is mm -hmm. experimental philosopher. Thought provoking. Okay. Yeah, sure. And one so, of the, hmm? good, so, can't make close. Well, one of the things that, that I actually, what caught my eye is you created a, a way to make the universe out of a mason jar, bubble gum, and radioactive marble. And now what you're doing <laughs> next is you're creating a photosynthetic restaurant. Yes, I what guess. What is that? <laughs> the photosynthetic restaurant is coming soon to Sacramento. And what I realized was that really the essence of human culture is cuisine. And plants, which often find their way onto our table, don't get a lot of cuisine of their own. Yet it seemed to me that we could really deliver a truly gourmet experience to plants if we took pure this natural is a restaurant ingredients. For plants. For plants. Right. Not for vegetarians. For plants. For we plants. took sunlight and filtered it through different color filters. And I did a lot of research. NASA did quite a bit back in the 1970s and 80s. And there were also a lot of Siberian laboratories back in the old Soviet years. They did a lot of research on the physiological effects of different <laughs> wavelengths of light for growing plants for us to eat. I turned it around and I said, what are the physiological effects for the plant? So how can I modulate the experience of the plant over the course of the day so that the plant is able to, in the morning, get a bit more protein, in the afternoon a little bit more sugar, and in the evening a little bit of spice. And all of this is possible when you start to kind of reverse engineer things and then when you put it outdoors in front of a museum. Jonathan Keats, tell me uh, just quickly where it will be and when and when people want to go to the restaurant for plants. The restaurant opens in April and will be through July at the Crocker Art Museum and I'm also publishing a book, ah, a yes. recipe book for plants so that people can prepare cuisine for plants at home. Oh, outstanding. Jonathan Keats, okay. provocateur. Up next on Press Here, CEOs at their personal best. Behind the scenes as heads of high tech play.